in this video we will be modifying a Seiko SKX diver's watch. In the morning. So before we start let's get into the mandatory wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Bowman Marche Capeland. And as always I'm wearing it on a NATO strap just to dress it down a bit. I don't want it to be too flashy. We'll quickly get on to the real topic of this video. I'll unbox the Psycho SKX Divers Watch. Now I bought the K version, it's a little bit cheaper and since we're modifying it anyway, I, I didn't want to get the J version. This is the SKX 007 K2, which comes with the Psycho stainless steel bracelet. To be honest, the standard Psycho Jubilee bracelet isn't the greatest. It feels a bit cheap, makes all kind of rattling noises, but I still preferred it over the rubber one and I wanted to have it in stock for future projects. The movement in the SKX is the Seiko 7S26 and it's one of the most popular modern automatic watch movements from Seiko. It has day and date but it's not hand winding and hacking, so we'll be replacing it with the Hattori N36A movement. I've been planning a Seiko mod for quite a while and recently I ordered some original cycle dials from an eBay seller in the UK. I've bought three dials from him like this one, it's a green dial from the SNK 805. Remember to wear protection when handling delicate objects with your greasy fingers. And I think all the dials have been taken from quite new watches because they all look absolutely fantastic. I've chosen SNK dials because they are compatible with the 7S26 and the Hattori N36A. The two dial feet at the back of the dial will just fit into the movement ring. I've bought a blue racer dial from a SNK371 and as you can see it's also in pristine state. And the last one that I got is the one that we'll be using today to modify the SKX. It's the white racer dial from the SNK369. And up until now all my watches had a black or dark dial. So this will be the first one with a white dial. And I'm very interested in the way it's going to turn out. Last thing I got is the Hattori N36A movement. It's a direct replacement for the 7S26. It also has day and date, but it is hand winding and hiking. I do need a new crown and stem since I can't reuse the one from the 7S26. So this is the plan. Install the N36A in the SKX using the white racer dial. But before I can do the modification I will need a few more parts. Um, luckily there is a watch convention called the Ricketick here in the Netherlands tomorrow and thanks to the wonders of video editing we'll skip to tomorrow. The next day. And I'm back from the watch convention with new parts and tools. As you can see the cycle bracelet is off. It was a bit fiddly to get it off but I managed to in the end. And it will be replaced by this aftermarket super solid oyster bracelet made by Miltad. I got it from Rob at Monster Watches and he swapped clasp for a Psycho branded one. It has a lot more weight than the Psycho Jubilee and I also hope it doesn't rattle as much. Let's put things aside to make some space and look at the other things I bought. Mostly tools, for starters a nice wooden box with a watch case opener. A watch spring bar tool that I use to take off the Psycho Jubilee bracelet. Some watchmaker screwdrivers. A rubber air dust blower bowl to clean out dust. 
and some radico to hold small parts and clean the parts from dust and oil. A couple of tweezers and this one has a nice ceramic tip. A white and red chapter ring also from Rob at Monster Watches and this one is from the now discontinued SKX053. They are pretty hard to get and we will be using it in a later video when we will be doing stage 2 of this modification. And this chapter ring does match up nicely with the white racer dial. In stage 2 we will be replacing the glass with a sapphire crystal. Installing this chapter ring and we'll swap the bezel insert with a black and red coke one. Let's start by opening the case using the watch case opener. When doing this yourself be very careful not to slip and scratch or damage your watch. I already gave it half a turn off camera to give it a start. Now that the case back has been removed we can see the watch movement. And before we can take it out we have to remove the crown and stem. With this 7S26 the crown and stem are a one piece part. And removing it isn't that hard when you know what to look for. At first I had no clue and I kept messing about with the crown and it turned out that I was pushing it at the wrong location. I found out that this would only work if you would push in the crown. Then a little lever appears and if you push this lever just slightly you can pull out the crown. With the crown removed you can just turn over the watch, gently tap it and the movement should fall out. Just to speed up this video just a bit and not make it a 2 hour video, I've sped up a few boring parts. So remember, when I'm working on stuff like this I do take my time. Um, and this isn't real time, by any means. Some say that the NH36A plastic movement holder does fit the SKX case. But I had them out anyway, so um, here you can see me swapping over the plastic movement holders. Again I'm taking my time and since it's the first time I'm doing this, I'm probably making a lot of beginner's mistakes, like trying to get the movement holder off with the dial still attached. That won't work so I first have to take off the dials and the dial itself. And since taking off the dials is a bit fiddly and I didn't want to damage them, I did it off camera and later I was watching what I was doing, not at the screen what I was filming. So. Uh, camera angles are a bit off, some of it is a bit off screen, so I'm sorry about it, but hey, it's the way it is. Luckily the rings fit 100%, you can just swap them over, it's really easy. It does take a little bit of persuasion to get them back on again, and you have to pay attention not to get the date wheel stuck.
And as you can see, we skipped a little bit ahead again because I had to do one more thing off camera. And that is getting those little C clips off. They're a real pain to get off. And if you lose them, there's really zero chance of finding them again. They need to be taken off because the SKX has the crown at 4 o'clock. Whereas the Hattori N36A that I got is made for the crown at 3 o'clock. This will cause the day wheel to not align properly in the dial window. But the parts are interchangeable. So what I'm doing is swapping over the Psycho 4 o'clock day wheel to the Hattori N36A. And the day wheels are a bit fragile, so here you can see me using a bit of Rodico to swap them over. And first try, and it was a big fail because the day change gear wheel got stuck under the day wheel. So let's reinstall the gear and try again. I installed the C-clamps back in with a tweezer and it's time to install the white racer dial. A cycle dial has two dial feet on the bottom and those need to be installed into the movement holder. And they need to align up 100% and somehow one of the dial feet got a little bit bent and it took a while before I noticed. Once I did notice, I bent it back really carefully and it installed without any more problems. Just checking to see if everything works and if the day and date will align up with the opening in the dial and everything looks great. I made sure that the movement was as close to I could get it to the 12 o'clock night position because that's when the date switches over to the next day. So it's time to install the hands. I have a special tool that makes installing the hands much easier but because the camera angles you can't really see what I'm doing so I'm sorry for that. Basically in short I'm using a piece of Rodico to hold the hands and use the tool to press down. And here I'm checking for clearance, just making sure that the hands do not touch each other. The date change is as close as I can get it. And lastly I need to install the seconds hand. And that's it, time to clean up. I'm using the blower for dust and a little bit of Rodico for maybe some 
fingerprints and oil and doing a final inspection before recasing the movement. Now making sure that I properly align the movement to the watch case. And the easiest way to do this is to install the top of the movement first. And that's something that I found out later because I had to do this a couple of times. And I have to say, it is getting a bit used to, but I do like the white dial in this diver's case. Now the last thing I need to do is fit a new crown and stem. Now the NH36 was delivered with a matching stem that has to be cut to length. The stem also has a thread and you have to use an aftermarket crown that you can thread on to the stem. So next I will be cutting down the stem step by step by step, taking a little bit off and trying if it will fit, and repeating this process until it's the perfect length. And because cutting it with some pliers doesn't give it a perfect edge, I needed to work on the edge a little bit with a file. Something that I also found out was that the aftermarket crown that I got had a rubber o-ring that was a little bit too wide and it gave me all kinds of problems. In the end I opted to take off the rubber o-ring and I am ordering a original cycle part to replace it. And another thing that would happen was that the crown would come loose when I would rotate it counterclockwise. And I solved it with using a little bit of super glue on the stem when I did the final install. Just making sure that the case back seal is in place and I am reinstalling the case back to close up the case. Again taking my time because it does have a tendency to get cross threaded. And that's it, that completes the modification of the SKX itself for now. It has a new Hattori N37A movement, swapped with the original Psycho 4 o'clock day wheel, and an original Psycho SNK 369 white racer dial. The last thing that I do want to do in this video is swap out the awful original Psycho bracelet for something much better. As I talked about earlier on in this video, at the convention, Rob from Monster Watches supplied me with a Miltat Super Oyster aftermarket bracelet. He swapped the class for a Psycho branded one, and I have to say, this bracelet is awesome. It is a bit too long for me, so I'll have to shorten it by taking out a few of the shackles. And what's nice about this bracelet is that I do not need a watch band link pin removal tool. 
because the bracelet is held together with tiny screws, so I can just shorten it with a very small screwdriver. And that's it, my freshly modified Psycho SKX. In an upcoming video I will be doing stage 2 of the modification by upgrading to Sapphire Crystal, installing the O53 chapter ring and changing the bezel insert. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe start modding watches yourself. Whatever you do, whatever you're into, remember you can learn just about anything you want on the internet. If you did enjoy it, uh, a comment or uh, a thumbs up is much appreciated and as always, stay curious.